Good morning, everybody. Are you happy? Awesome. Okay. Hello. Our dear Star of Wine directors. Hello, my name is Laís. I am the East Community Manager for Startup Grind, which means I take care of Africa, Asia Pacific, and Eastern Europe. Just a little bit of the word. And we don't lack on human resources just because we like challenges. And uh, I'm very glad to introduce you to Jeff Higgins. He is the cloud and CTO and CIO. He is a guy who believes that cloud is the only thing that should always have been. It's the only way of providing good services. And actually, it's the only way how we can build scalable architectures and more mature service level agreements. If you like anything that sounds like SaaS, cloud-based services, or software architecture, you're going to love this guy. And in his talk, in this talk, you're going to learn a lot about business strategy and how to build more empowered teams and how to start a company if you're starting one now. He worked for most of his life in the corporate culture, in the corporate world, and for the last 15 years, he has been starting several companies, what we call serial entrepreneur. Smart Things, the company of which he's a co-founder now, along with other six co-founders, I haven't seen a, such a big team of co-founders for so long, is a, is a company that's making your life easier or less annoying by improving the way you organize things in your house. So it's about being, building smart house and cloud-based services to make sure you, can, you don't need to turn off the lights when you get in your room, basically. So uh, I'm very glad to introduce you guys to Jeff Higgins, and I hope you really enjoy this talk. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, so uh, I wanted to take some time this morning to, uh, to actually do a little storytelling. I usually, I'd speak at a fair number of conferences, and I'm usually talking about smart things, the product, or smart things you know, in our architecture and how it actually works. But I wanted to take some time this morning to actually just tell you the story of Smart Things, the company, and how we got started, and what the journey was like. Um, so let's get started. So the title of this talk was From Kickstarter to Becoming a Leading Platform for the Consumer Internet of Things. And I'm going to say this again at the end, but I want to point out that uh, being a leading platform for the Consumer Internet of Things at this point doesn't actually mean very much. Right? Because we're just getting started, right? So leading platform, yes, one of the leaders, absolutely. But, but is it in, you know, are we in, are we in 100 million homes? Does, do 80% of all consumers have a smart home? No. So we've still got a very, very long way to go on this journey. But it all started on a day back in February of 2011, when my business partner, Alex Hawkinson, went to his house in Colorado a little ski shack in Leadville, Colorado, with the family in tow for, for a ski vacation, and found the house literally destroyed by water. See, the, the, the heat had gone out, the electricity had gone out, the power had gone out, the pipes had frozen and burst. And then the heat had come back on, and the pipes had thawed out, and water had run unabated through this house for 60 days without anyone knowing it. So the vacation didn't turn out as planned, uh, needless to say. And he got the house repaired, which was uh, not cheap. And it was literally almost a, 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 a 11 months later, Christmas of that same year, when they were back in the house in Leadville, and his daughter was watching Netflix on her, her LTE-connected iPad, and he had perfect signal on his cell phone, and he was downloading books onto his Kindle, and he thought, wow, this just doesn't seem right. right? We're so connected in everything that we do, and yet this, this very expensive asset that he had in this house in Colorado couldn't so much as you know, shoot up a flare or cry for help and say, hey, there's something wrong here. Right? The house itself didn't have a voice. And he was sitting there with all this connectivity in the air, 
and thought, wow, you know, what can we do to solve this problem? So we actually started in, uh, in January of that, uh, the very next month, he actually brought all seven co-founders of what would ultimately become smart things. We all went out to that very same house for another ski trip, just for a guy's weekend. And we were sitting around talking and, you know, kind of brainstorming around this idea of how we would solve this problem. And the idea that we had was to actually build a, a sensor package for second homeowners, right? Something that would, you would put in a second home, it would have some sensors on it like temperature and motion, maybe a camera, it would be an LTE connected device, it would have battery backup, just so that if you were a second homeowner and something bad happened, your home could actually have a voice. And we started building that. We actually started prototyping. And on my, slide, on my chart, by the way, as we go through this, the green, the little green square that you see up there is actually the number of people that we had working on it. And the, and the red below the line is actually how much money we'd put into it. So that's gonna, you're gonna see that change over time here. So we started prototyping this little, this little sensor package. And, and you know, you can see us hacking with Arduino and trying to figure out how to, how to make this work. Um, there was also some scotch involved. But <laughs> actually, the scotch was actually when we signed the papers to incorporate the company, because we spent a couple of months prototyping something, a little bit of cloud software, some mobile software, some Arduinos for, as a, for, for sensors. And eventually, we incorporated the company in, uh, in uh, uh, April of 2012. And you'll see that uh, as soon as we incorporated the company, we started, we started growing the employee base, right? We started putting more money into it and started growing the employee base. And so at that time, we, we had about three or four kind of people working on this, starting to, starting to build uh, hardware or design hardware. Uh, and that's another interesting point. Uh, you know, uh, when, I, when I got introduced, it was all about cloud software, cloud, cloud, cloud. And it's true that as a group of founders, we'd never built a hardware product. We had no clue about hardware. And so the first thing we had to do was go hire some hardware people, somebody, some people who actually knew how to design hardware. And so that was happening in this window between April and August. And then in August, actually before August, we decided, we made the decision to kickstart the business. Now that was interesting because um, as a team, we've done a lot of work with telecom providers. And our initial kind of thought was, well, we're gonna do a partnership with a telecom provider, right? And so we'll find one of the telcos that we've worked with in the past, and we'll go do some kind of pilot, right, with them. But Kickstarter was going crazy at this time, right, and just exploding, and so eventually we said, wow, maybe that's, maybe that's the wrong thing to do here. Maybe we should actually kickstart. But we were concerned because we actually had three different constituencies that we wanted to talk to with our message. We, we, there was the homeowner, the consumer, but there were developers because we're a platform for developers to build apps for your house. And then there are device makers or, or, or makers that we wanted to talk to because we wanted people to build stuff that was actually gonna be connected or work with smart things as well. And that was a struggle because I think if we had if we had done our Kickstarter campaign and made it much more focused, right, like a door lock, we actually could have done a lot better. We could have raised more money. But we told this multi, this multi uh, 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 person story, this multi stakeholder story uh, about what we wanted to build, about our platform and our vision for what we wanted to build. And we did a great job of that, but, you know, but it, what that meant was that at the time that we kick-started, you know, we only raised 1.2 million. Now, at the time, that was like the second highest uh, uh, tech campaign on Kickstarter of all time, but it doesn't really compare with some of the things that we've seen since, right? So an interesting lesson there is that, you know, platform stories on Kickstarter, they're hard, right? They're complicated. It's a hard story to tell, right? Whereas, you know, Oculus Rift, it's an easy story to tell, right? So, so we kick-started the company, raised 1.2 million. Now, I should, I should rewind a little bit. At, leading up to the Kickstarter, we had the, we had the seven founders working on it, right? So we had, we had seven people working. And we had about another, another three 
consultants, the hardware, some of the hardware folks and some other consultants that were helping us. And we told this really big platform story. And um, what that meant, sorry, I'm skipping ahead, but what that meant was that, you know, we had a lot of work to do. So we did the Kickstarter campaign and then immediately hired 15 more people, right? And we did that actually by taking a company that we owned, which was a software consulting company, and shutting down the consulting business and saying, poof, you're all smart things employees. Let's go build this. That was, that was awesome um, because it gave us a team that uh, could actually start executing. The next thing that happened was what we, uh, at the uh, Dublin Web Summit, we went over it less than a month later with some really awful prototypes and a good story and won the Dublin Web Summit startup competition. And that was super important because it, I think it got us even more noticed, right? Kickstarter was great. Winning that startup competition was super important. And it was the thing that got us our seed, our seed round, right? Our seed round followed immediately on the heels of that startup competition. And in December of 2012, we raised a $3 million seed round and then kept on growing from an employee perspective. We went to CES in, uh, in January of 2013 and literally had a kiosk in somebody else's booth. Right, where we were telling the story, right? We couldn't afford, we didn't want to spend the money on our own booth, right? Because we were spending the money on people to build the product. So flash, flash forward to uh, March of 2013, we shipped our first product. Now, it doesn't seem like a big deal now, but I can tell you it certainly seemed like it then because Let's talk about what actually happened. In 10 months and seven days from incorporating the company, we built five consumer electronics devices, our SmartThings Hub, our Motion Sensor, our Multi-Sensor, our Presence Tag, and our Arduino Shield. So designed, industrial, FCC certification, manufactured, in the box, coming from the warehouse, out the door in 10 months. We also built our cloud, or at least the early version of it, we built our iOS app and, uh, and, and started shipping to those Kickstarter backers, right? When I look back on that, frankly, you know, even now at, you know, at, the, at, at the pace that we're trying to move now and we're, you know, we're 100 people now, right? I look back on that and I'm like, how the, I, don't, I, don't, I, I remember it, but I'm not sure how we did that, right? Um, and it's, I think it's a great testament to the fact that there are times, frankly, when a smaller group of people can actually accomplish more than a bigger group of people, right? That that smaller group of people, uh, among other things, had a way easier time, I think, making decisions about what we were going to do, right? We made decisions very, very quickly because we knew we couldn't take the time to, to really do a lot of analysis. Did we make all the decisions correctly? Did we do all the right things? Hell no, right? Not even close. One of, my great, one of my great ones, by the way, is that that initial SmartThings hub didn't, run, didn't have an operating system on it. It was software on bare metal. There was no OS. And if I could go back in time and change one thing, that would actually be what I'd change. Because right? it's, made, it's made some things harder for us that otherwise would have been much easier. So, you know, we started to get a lot of a lot of good uh, kind of kudos and, and feedback from customers. Not that there's not bad feedback from customers too, there certainly is. And really flashing forward now to August of this past year, we get acquired by Samsung. And I'm, I'm gonna be running out of time here shortly, so I wanna, I wanna get to kind of the meat of, of what I think worked. Right? What, what was it that we did that made this work? Beyond the obvious thing here, which is we were throwing people and money at it like mad. Right? So you can, you can kind of get that sense, right? That from, from, you know, from start to acquisition, I think we had about 55 employees at the time we were acquired and we'd raised about $20 million. But what made it, well, and, and then there's CES this year, which you can see looked a little bit different than that first CES. Ironically, we had people at CES this year in our booth working and, and that guy there giving the talk in our booth, I have no idea who he was. 
I, I just, some guy, some presenter guy that we hired, I don't know who he is. So what, what worked? Let's talk briefly about what really, what, what were the things that really made this work, right? That really let us go from an idea to being acquired by Samsung in two and a half years. Number one, we had what, we, what, what has been called in the industry a BHAG, a big, hairy, audacious goal. And our big, hairy, audacious goal was actually twofold. Number one, become the open platform for programming for the physical world, meaning we want to make it easy for developers to write apps for things. And number two, become the leading platform for the consumer Internet of Things, right? So it doesn't get much bigger than that. That's a really, those are really big goals. Number two, we were never shy about raising money and taking the dilution, right? We knew if we were gonna have a really big goal that we had to be able to, to, to resource it. We had to have the people and the money and the resources to actually make this work. We had absolutely phenomenal PR. I skipped over it, but you saw a little bit of the, some of the PR. And I can't, I can't under, uh, I can't over, over tell how important that was. Right? Especially if you're, if you're telling a platform story, right? PR is just everything. And you know, if we go back and look at our PR, it's, it's crazy some of the coverage that we had you know, on CNN while the Kickstarter campaign was still running. We paid for it, right? We didn't, it wasn't free, right? but we had phenomenal PR. We had a product that encouraged storytelling. And that's, that's just, it, it goes hand in hand together with the PR, but you know, it's an amazing thing when you have a consumer product that encourages people to tell their own stories about what they're doing with your product, right? It makes getting the word out a whole lot easier. We had a great team with 150, more than 150 man years of working together before we started the company, right? And, and if I rewind and, and ask myself again, how did we do what we did in the first 10 months? That's how we did it, right? Because if we'd, if we'd been cobbling together a, a brand new team of people that had never worked together, we never could have done what we did in that, in that time. You know, there are people on our team today that have, you know, that have relationships going back to 96. We've been working together for a very, very long time. And perhaps most importantly, this was just a really fun product to build. It was an awesome product to build. It was a fun product to use, right? Uh, and so, you know, when I, when I think about everything that we've done, you know, these are the things that pop out in my mind. But as I've said at the very beginning, we're just, just getting started. Smart Things today at 100 people is, is you know, not nearly enough, right? And, and we're hiring like crazy. So if, you're, if you want to work in the Internet of Things, right, we've, we now have our new headquarters in Palo Alto in the old Borders bookstore in, in, uh, in downtown Palo Alto, and we are absolutely hiring like crazy because this is just the beginning, right? In the next couple of years, you're gonna see us go into retail. You're gonna see us show up in mobile operators. You're gonna see us go into 20 countries over the next couple of years, right? And we're not doing that with 100 people, as you can, as you can imagine. So, um, so you know, we're, we're, this is just the beginning for smart things, this is just the beginning for smart things as part of Samsung, but we continue to operate as a standalone entity, a standalone business, but with, but with the resources and the distribution channels of the world's largest consumer electronics company behind us, and that is super exciting. Thank you. I know I'm over, t I know I'm over time and I'm gonna get in trouble, but. But I, but I have to show, if I can figure out how to do it, this video. So, you know, he, he, uh, he created the SmartThings app for his, his liquor cabinet so that whenever he walked close to it, not only did it light up, but it played the sound of angels singing. <laughs> this is in that category of fun that I talked about, right? Seeing what people do with your, your product, right? Anyway, thanks again.